Welcome to Community Talk. My name is Katherine Freshley and I'm a board member at Creative Arts Enid and I'm here today with Lisa Magyar who is our executive director. We're going to talk to you about Creative Arts Enid and about a exciting fundraiser that we have coming up in a couple of weeks. Lisa, for people that don't know anything about Creative Arts, could you give us just a quick overview of what it is? Well, Creative Arts is a nonprofit art studio. Uh, we are located in the 200 East Block of Maple. Okay. And so Feeding the Arts is the fundraiser that's coming up mm -hmm. in a couple of weeks, right? Yes. And can you tell us a little bit about it? We're pretty excited about this. We've done Feeding in the Arts in the past, um, but we've put a new twist on it this year. So we're actually turning it into a soup cook-off. And it will be February 17th. We've invited uh, local home chefs okay. to participate and make their best soup and um, you'll get to come and buy a bowl for $15. That's your entrance fee. You get a bowl that has been made by myself and some of our um, pottery students to uh, eat out of. So you can fill that bowl up as many times as you want. Great. So it's my understanding that People come in, they can sample the soups, and as a board, we're working to get a great variety of soups. So we've asked people to submit their ideas, and then we're choosing to ensure that people can try a, a range of flavors. And then, like you said, when they find one they like, they can go and fill up their whole bowl, right? Yes. And, and then you can go back as many times as you want. Awesome. As long and as there's soup. <laughs> what other things will there be to eat? Is it just soup or? Uh, no, we'll also have uh, some homemade breads and some homemade desserts um, by the Junior Welfare League is, is volunteering for us. So thank you, Junior Welfare League, for volunteering and making desserts. Uh, we'll also have some crackers and of course, whoever's making the soup, if they want cheese or sour cream or something like that to go with their soup, then they provide that as well. Awesome, so one more time, it's February 17th, right? Yes. And. When does it start? It is 11 to 2 o'clock. Okay. To just come and go as it works into your schedule to come downtown and have lunch. And it's in the Creative Arts Studio in the Creative HQ building, yes. which was 222 East Maple. And we are also still looking for soup makers. So if anybody out there is interested in making a soup, uh, please contact Creative Arts Enid at gmail.com and let us know and we'll send you an application. So one more time, February 17th, 11 to 2. Jot that down, it's $15. You get to take home a handmade bowl. You get to eat as much soup as you want and there'll be bread and dessert and, and drinks. Mm -hmm. Now let's get back to Creative Arts and, and tell people a little bit more about what Creative Arts does, the kind of classes and workshops that you offer and why it's really such a great asset to the community? Well, we have classes for all ages, um, from the Mommy Me class, which is toddler age, um, all the way up to adult art classes. Our uh, For Art's Sake is an adult class that is just drop in different mediums depending on the artist that comes in. Um, in February, we have some really good classes and workshops coming up. Tom Bepley has uh, offered to do a watercolor class and any of you in Enid know that he is a wonderful watercolorist and has his stuff all over Enid so we're really excited to have him come in and teach a class. Signups are still available for the class. It starts next Monday 6 to 7 30. Uh, we also have a tie-dye workshop which is really kind of fun. Um, we're going to do an apron and you're allowed to bring three or four pieces, the t-shirts, onesies, socks, something like that. Um, as long as we have supplies and there's time, you can uh, do some different things. But she's gonna focus on a heart shape for Valentine's. Mm -hmm. So we're really excited about that. Also, uh, Susan Southall is coming in and doing a knitting workshop. She's gonna do beginner stitch education and then uh, working towards making a prayer shawl. So those are our big uh, workshops and classes That's for great. February. And aside from those 
the big workshops and classes that you just mentioned, what about on a weekly basis? What types of things do you have going on? And, and do you have re recurring classes, things that people sign up for for an extended period of time or those drop-in events? What's an average week look like? We do. We have a lot of drop-in classes that we provide um, just so it seems to fit into people's schedules a little bit better. We have after-school art, which is from 3.45 to 5.15 every Monday and Tuesday for grades one through three, and then Tuesdays is grades four and five. Um, and it is $10 because it is also underwritten by a grant from the Oklahoma Arts Council. Mm -hmm. So we're very thankful for that. We're able to offer it at a lower price. Uh, we have the Skip to My Louvre homeschool class, excuse me, which is a really great um, education tool where they learn art history about an artist and then they get to do art that is on the first and third Thursdays. Um, every Tuesday is a, a homeschool class. So we have either Skip to My Louvre or uh, Follow Me Art, which is learning how to draw and then paint uh, oil pastels. We work in different mediums. Uh, we have Mommy and Me, which is the first and third Monday of every month and it is for toddlers. Most of them are two years old, but mm -hmm. it will go up to about four years, and it is all about process art, and the kids just, it's not the final project, it's just learning motor skills and how to associate color and um, grip on brushes and stuff like that. Um, then we also have the For Art's Sake, is every Tuesday, or the second and fourth Tuesday of every month, and that is an adult um, art class. Mm -hmm. We have done, pottery painting plates. We've done uh, polymer clay sculpting. I, I did one recently that was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed it and it was called Don't Waste the Paint. So um, as an artist, I hate when I have leftover mm -hmm. paint for something, I have to use it on something. So it was really a fun project to have the different adults come in and just create with a very limited palette. They had to use the colors that were available to them. Um, and then we also have every Thursday from 5.30 to 8.30 open Pottery Lab. And again, we're so thankful to the Enid community for helping us out. Uh, NOC lets us use their art building to do our pottery classes. So that is over at NOC, the Thursday mm -hmm. classes. Um, everything you can sign up online uh, ahead of time or you can just throw us an email and let us know, hey, I'm coming, and um, and you can pay when you come to the class. You don't have to mm -hmm. register online. We've had a few people ask about that. So it's clear that there's a lot going on every week. And yes. like you were just saying, most of it you can sign up for online, and the whole calendar is available online mm -hmm. and on Facebook, Yes. right? And you yes. post a lot of the events on Facebook and reminders about the classes that are going on. Mm -hmm. And looking ahead, to March, because some people will be planning for that, thinking about mm -hmm. spring break. What are some of the big things you have going on in March? Yeah, it's time to start thinking about spring break and school being out. Um, we have spring break classes. We are going to do our Skip to My Louvre class in the morning, and then we'll have two Follow Me classes in the afternoon. And these, again, are drop-in classes. You sign up per class. Mm -hmm. um, you can sign up for every day of the week or you can just sign up for one Monday morning class and um, you don't have to sign up for everything for the whole week. It's, it's not drop off camp. Mm -hmm. It is just fun art experiences throughout the week. We also have on March 18th, our art festival and food truck, which I'm really excited about. We've got some really great artists lined up, um, but we are always looking for more artists to participate. So if anybody is interested, please do check out online um, Art Festival or uh, shoot us an email, creativeartsenid at gmail.com. Now Art Festival, if you haven't been out in the past, this is the third annual and it was a great turnout last year and the year mm -hmm. before and it was just a ton of fun. So many people looking at the art, trying the different food from the various food trucks, a really great community event. Mm -hmm. And Lisa, if people want to get involved at Creative Arts, other than attending a class, if say they want to volunteer, are there any opportunities for them? 
Absolutely. <laughs> we are always looking for volunteers. As a nonprofit, um, I don't think you can run without volunteers. So we have uh, volunteers for our special events, volunteers to help out during the classes. We are also looking for um, artists, local artists who may want to teach an acrylics class or like Tom teaching a watercolor class if they want to teach their medium we are always open to putting a class together and they can just check out online creativeartsenid.com or email us creativeartsenid at gmail.com thank you Lisa thanks for your time today and thank you everyone for watching and just as a quick reminder feeding the arts is that big fundraiser we have coming up February 17th, that's a Friday. Get out of your office, get out of your house, come downtown for some great lunch for a great cause. Thank you. Welcome back to Enid's Community Talk. I'm Christy Brown, and I get the pleasure of playing Patsy Cline in this year's Gaslight Theater's Dinner Theater, Always Patsy Cline. And this to my left is my co-star. I'm Carol Haygood, and I play Louise, uh, Patsy's super fan. Uh, this, this is a true story, and, and this particular story is sanctioned by Patsy Cline's family. So uh, I think that's kind of an interesting little kick there for the it show. It is. The storyline is actually 28 of Patsy Cline's most beloved songs, and you will recognize all of them from Crazy to Walking After Midnight, I Fall to Pieces, um, all of her best-known songs. But the storyline is actually told through her number one fan. So it's a hilarious comedic show with lots of fun, lots of energy. Tell us a little bit about Louise's costumes. Um, I like to describe Louise as, you, you remember that show Alice, and they had Flo, the waitress on there that used to always tell Mel, Mel, you kiss my grits, you know. <laughs> Louise is Flo on steroids. <laughs> and if you gave Flo a bedazzler, you would end up with Louise's costumes. That's a true story. So. <laughs> That's a true story. We have a lot of fun on stage together. Uh, there's lots of movement, lots of costume changes, lots of dancing going on, some crowd involvement, which is always fun. We actually get to do this year's production at the Enid Symphony Hall for the Dinner Theater, mm -hmm. uh, located on Broadway in the Knox Building. It's going to be on the fourth floor. Right. Uh, we are super excited to be there. The setting is very intimate. Um, we, you actually feel like you're a part of the show because the storyline, a lot of it takes place like in the Grand Ole Opry in the Esquire Ballroom. So you kind of get the feel like you're there in the actual show. You do. You get a ballroom atmosphere. You've got, you know, it kind of like a bar tables. But, but as you're sitting there, there will be audience interaction. Warning, so come prepared. <laughs> come prepared. Uh, but fun. Right. But oh, fun. yes. Fun. Lots of fun. Well, we have to take a second to brag on our band. We are backed up by the awesome. Bodacious Bobcats. They mm -hmm. are, uh, the band is made up of a lot of local celebrities. A lot mm -hmm. of names you will recognize. Billy Beck is playing our steel guitar and our lead. On our bass, we have Gene Mooney. The drums are Billy Thompson. On the violin slash fiddle is Bill Nolan. And our music director's name is Terry Gaylor. She's actually on the piano, but she's also our music di director. Mm -hmm. And then we have Chuck Lips, who's doing all the backup vocals and acoustic guitar. Mm -hmm. They are a band you don't want to miss. They are incredible. They have just, they've kind of made us step up on our game, haven't they, Carol? <laughs> I, I tell you what, uh, every night we go to rehearsal and, and the band starts playing, and it's like I just sit there and go, oh, wow. That's so cool. They yeah, and, are and so talented. They are so talented. super talented. We, we truly are honored to have them helping us with this show, and they make up a, a big part of it. We couldn't do it without them, could we? Oh, no. Uh, they, they are a huge part of this show. They've, uh, by golly, they have put in hours and yeah. hours of rehearsals, but, but they, are, 
they are the ultimate professionals. They, they're, they're awesome. You're going to love them. You are. <laughs> this show is also being produced by Ross Healthcare, Home Health and Hospice. We want to say a huge thank you for their generosity. And it's mm -hmm. also being catered by Panavinos. Why don't you tell us a little um, bit about that, Carol? Well, Panavinos will be there to, uh, on the dates for the show are uh, February 17th and 18th. And that weekend, that Friday and Saturday, we'll be having Chicken Cordon Bleu from Panavinos. And then the next weekend's the 23rd and the 24th, and they'll be serving pork chops with some fancy stuff on the side and all of that. There will always be dessert. <laughs> we have desserts at intermission. There's a cash bar, so you can partake there. Um, it, it, is a, it is going to be an evening of laughter, of good food, of, of wonderful music, incredible music. Christy, Christy just knocks Patsy Klein out of the water. And, uh, and then you get dessert, you know, so can't, can't you can't miss back. on this. You you're going to laugh, you're going to cry. It's, it's going to be great. Well, we can't go through this interview without mentioning the most important part, which is our director, Frank yeah. Baker. Mm -hmm. uh, this is Frank's second time to direct the show. Mm -hmm. um, I had the pleasure of working with him the first time, which was in 2005. Oh. So it's incredible that we get to work again together. Um, he is a lot of fun. He puts on a show you will not <laughs> want to miss. Incredibly talented. Talk a little and bit about Frank. Frank kind of gives us free reign. <laughs> uh, I, I won't, you know, there's there's a lot of directors that want it done just their way, and and that's and that's fine because it's normally very good. Frank kind of says, "Oh, we'll just go off and do whatever you feel like there," and <laughs> and uh, that that adds to a lot of the comedic uh, aura of the show, yeah. and and it's uh, it's refreshing because you're, you're given. You're given the opportunity to to express the the character as as you feel that character Absolutely. themselves. And he's just a great director to work with and a great yes. person. And many of you know him, and he's just a lot of fun. We have to give uh, some special thanks to we have our assistant director Stephanie Witt Ritter, Ritter, excuse me, mm -hmm. and then we have our choreographer Angeline Lyons. She was a <laughs> lot of fun to work with. We had a blast. Bless, bless her night. heart. <laughs> bless her pee picking heart. She is so much fun, and yeah. we're still kind of trying to remember all that fun choreography, but we're getting there, aren't we? Um, <laughs> we have our moments. <laughs> Um, also, we have some special cameos. Karen Staples has been helping us backstage. Right. She has a fun mm -hmm. little part that uh, you'll get to see at the play. Mm -hmm. um, let's see if we left anybody out. Uh, Carmen Ball oh. has done our it's set design and some costuming as well. She is always incredible to work with. Carmen always puts incredible sets together. Yes, and and yes. this one is this one is no exception. It's 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 simple. But you know, working in the the in the uh, symphony center, that stage is a little bit smaller. Yes. So that's kind of been a little bit of a challenge: is is trying to fit everything in that stage, and Absolutely. while you've still got six band members, and yeah. Uh, so it but it'll work out. It always well, works out. Philip and Whitney over at the symphony center. Uh, Philip is kind of managing the symphony hall, I believe, and has kind of let us in to do what we need to do there. And Whitney's right. running our technical side of things. Right. So we are blessed with a great team. It's going to mm -hmm. be a great show. It's going to be so much fun. We want to let everybody know that if you do plan on seeing the production, you need to get your tickets in advance. Uh, we need to know that so they can mm -hmm. prepare the meals for that night. So, But we mm -hmm. want to let you know also that you need to get the tickets fast. They are selling out like crazy. They so are. They are. We don't have a lot of time to get those tickets. And, and if you prefer a vegetarian uh, meal, those are available too if, if they know in advance. So whenever I looked at the uh, website the other day, there's not a lot of tickets left. There's so you really, and you don't want to miss it. You don't want to miss this show. So it's you, you got to get on the horse. It's going to be a great experience. <laughs> Um, also, just a few more pointers. The show actually starts at 8. The meal starts at 7. Mm -hmm. um, there will be a bar available at the show. Uh, what else did we leave out for them? Uh, it is Friday, just, Saturday, both mm -hmm. weekends. Right. And But mm -hmm. we just want to, again, say thank you for this opportunity. We want to invite the whole community to come out and share this experience with us because we're having a blast, and it's only just begun. I have a feeling... There's lots more fun to have. It, 
huh? It is, and and if you want to come twice, you might you might want to plan to come twice because I guarantee you, if you come once, and you come again, you're going to f pick up some things that weren't that weren't the same because it will not be the same two nights in a row. I guarantee you it won't. That brings <laughs> up a good point because with this particular show, we get to do a lot of improv and mm -hmm. because it's like you're at a live show, so you wouldn't always say the same thing when you're doing um, you know, a, a band right. show at the Esquire Ballroom or at the Grand Ole Opry. So it is a lot of just mm -hmm. what comes natural. And that mm -hmm. that has been fun every night to see how that changes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, it's kind of fly by the seat of your pants yes. a little bit. Yeah. But you know, whenever you work with audience participation, you know you're going to get you're going to ask some questions, you're going to get different answers, and and you're going to have to come back with that a little bit differently. So, you know, every night's going to be different. So if you want to come more than once, you feel free to do that. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> Well, again, we are very excited to have this opportunity. We want to say thank you. We want to invite you. Please come out and enjoy with us at the Symphony Hall, February 17th and 18th, 24th and 25th. Must get your tickets in advance. You can go to gaslighttheater.org uh -huh. online and purchase them, or you can purchase them at the box office. And that number, I believe, is 234-2307. So please uh -huh. come out and enjoy with us. Carol, do you have anything in closing? You are going to, like I said before, you're going to laugh. You're going, you might even cry, and that's okay. <laughs> you're going to want to get up and dance. You're going to sing along. You're going to tap your toes. You're going to have good food. You're going to have good desserts. You're going to hear an incredible band. That you are not going to be sorry. That this this will be the highlight of your weekend, and. It's just shortly after Valentine's Day. If you haven't, if you haven't made that Valentine's gift yet, you might want to think about it. Great yes. idea. Well, again, uh, we just want to remind you that Gaslight Theater is a nonprofit community theater. This is one of our fundraisers, so not only is it going to be a great show, but it's for a great cause. So come out and join us and have some fun, and just hopefully you leave with a good feeling and lots of laughter. And we're looking forward to it. Mm -hmm. Excited to see it. You won't want to miss it. Gaslight Theaters, always Patsy Klein. <laughs>